my name is Tracy. I am a senior consultant at Valore Partners. We're a um, Microsoft shop consulting company, corporate offices in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I have been been working with .NET development since about 2005, 2006 as a developer. Um, started messing with SharePoint in around 2008, so it's been a while. Um, various ways to contact me if you need to, GitHub, SharePoint Exchange, LinkedIn, email, all that good stuff. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about themes and I'll try to keep it short because I know we have another presenter coming too. Um, first of all, what is a theme <clears throat> if you don't know? Um, essentially, it's the color scheme in SharePoint and there's sort of two renditions of that right now. There's theme in the modern UI and then there's theme in the classic UI. Um, and I can just give you a quick example of, Vesa did this too in his demo, but just to give you a visual of what that theme change looks like. It can be, it can be pretty dramatic as you can see. So I think to some of us developers, it feels like fluff, but the reality of an, as an end user is that it's, a, it's a very impactful, perhaps one of the most aesthetically impactful parts um, of SharePoint. And so in the modern UI, um, a theme has become essentially a JSON file where you're defining um, color buckets and what those color values will be. In the classic UI, a theme, what we're calling a theme was referred to as a composed look, which included what's synonymous with the modern UI theme as an SP color file where you're defining all those colors. Um, it also included, could include fonts and master page as well. Um, just FYI. And we've got, Microsoft has provided a few different tools for creating themes, depending on whether you're doing a classic theme or you're doing a modern theme, if you haven't looked at those at all. For the classic themes, it's just a, a pretty small footprint um, client install, and you get kind of a default settings when you, when you first open it. Um, you can look at the different you can sort them by basically color buckets, which is sort of synonymous with fabric palette slots now, loosely translates to that. Or you can look at them in a more semantic sense, which is gonna be by UI groups. Um, but the more exciting theme tool that we have is the UI fabric theme designer. For those of you that haven't seen this yet, it's, it's super cool. Um, it's a lot of fun. When you first open it, you're just gonna get these default color settings here um, and you pick these three and then it essentially interprets the different shades of those um, and you've got two view slot options here one so this is what I was talking about it's kind of synonymous with the uh, buckets that you'd see over here so not as semantic just kind of straight colors but if you want to understand what that translates to you can look at the more semantic slots which is going to start to describe the different UI objects and what colors those would be um, and then there's an accessibility piece here which is really nice and accessibility validation so if I if I start to get if my contrast is not sharp enough and I can't read the text on top of the background it will warn you so you get a little little error here which is that's handy and that existed in the other one it just wasn't um, this manual contrast test here is synonymous with that but this one's a little more you know in your face if you're if it's uh, if it's not going to work that is so <clears throat> just to give you guys for those that haven't seen it I think those are kind of cool tools I thought I would bring that up um, Okay, so why do we discuss classic versus modern themes? Um, I've been involved in a couple of projects where unfortunately we weren't able to make a really clean break to modern so that everything was starting modern. Um, and you may find yourself in that situation as well. There can be a number of reasons for that. Some of that might include, some of those might include um, the need to leverage analysis tools that you can only that are only available in the cloud, like the page diagnostics tool, the modernization scanner. Um, 
in in one case, we just had a very high risk on premise environment. The infrastructure itself was unstable, and so the client just wanted to get everything off and into the cloud as quickly as we could. And then from there, once we were in the cloud, do more of our modernization, as it were. Um, in other cases, you might just encounter some user resistance, um, specifically eliminating subsites and just going with the hub. Um, you know, we always try to sell them on that as much as we can, but at the end of the day, we're in a service industry, and if the users just aren't aren't having it, then we have to adapt. Um, so, what can happen if you've got some kind of classic theme mixed with some modern theme in Office 365? One of the things that can happen is that you get the user can have an inconsistent UI experience, um, which is not ideal because we want them to be on board. We want it to be kind of an intuitive experience for them. So I've encountered this challenge a couple times and I found a few things to be useful. Um, one thing that I built myself because I just had a need for it was a tool, it's um, just a simple C Sharp console app that converts either a modern JSON theme to classic or a classic SP color theme to JSON. Um, so we can take a look at that real quick. I have it up on my GitHub site and the links to everything are in this PowerPoint. I'll give this to BESA to provide um, so you guys have, have that for reference. But I have a, just a really quick little readme that'll walk you through exactly how it works, how it does what it does. Um, if you're curious, so I did define here exactly the conversion that I'm doing as far as like the translation between the classic palette slots and then the modern palette slots. And if you're curious how I figured that out, I there's a really cool, I stumbled onto this. Um, so this is the Office UI Fabric React Wiki and it referenced, it kind of walked me through how it was doing what it was doing, and it referenced a TypeScript file where it was defining the different uh, semantic slots. And those translated really closely to these, or actually to the UI groups. So that is essentially how I did, if you're curious, that's how I created the translation, essentially, um, and it seems pretty accurate for the most part. It uh, You'll see when I go through the demo, I, I do still recommend opening it in modern, whatever, whichever conversion you're doing one way or the other, open it up, look at it, look at the settings pages and things like that because there are some quirky, you might see some unusual quirky things where suddenly there's a line in the header that you can't read the, you can't read the text on top of the background. So it is important to kind of test it out and vet it out. Um, just to make sure that that's working okay. Enough talking, let's look at the demo. So this is this is my tool basically, super simple. You're welcome to um, download it, make any changes you want, make any suggestions you want by all means, but it's literally just two functions. One is converting modern to classic, one is converting classic to modern. In the case of modern to classic, you're gonna need to provide that JSON file um, a, a val basically a valid um, modern theme JSON file. And then in the classic to modern, you're going to need to provide a valid SP color file. <clears throat> Just un uncomment whichever one you want to run. Make sure you're filling in the paths for your respective file, which I have done here. Um, for the sake of time, I kind of did this ahead of time. So I went ahead and created my own custom theme here with lots of pink, pinks and purples, which my daughter would love because she's all about the pink and purple. And I I saved this already, so it's downloaded here. And we're just going to run this and convert it. Super quick and easy, done. Your conversion is complete. Yay. And now I have pink modern theme. I had to prov also provide the name of the output. I did that earlier as well. So pinkmodernTheme.json. This is our new theme. And I went ahead and put that in a modern, I've, I've actually already put it in my E5 dev subscription, which Vesa, loving, loving the E5 dev, dev subscription so much, by the way. 
So we can select the new thing that I just converted from classic to modern. And there it is. Um, it's not it's not crazy. I didn't get nuts with the customizations. I basically just changed these top colors here to pink and purple shades. But you can see that it did, you know, did apply that. Um, but I would imagine uh, what's the orange there? That's interesting. It takes a few refreshes. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Now it's all pink. Um, you would you would probably have the, the scenario that I've encountered is we have a classic theme. We want to get essentially a modern version of it. Um, so that's the typical conversion that I've done. So this I kind of mentioned before, anytime you can start with a modern site collection, it's going to make at like the root. It's going to make your life a lot easier as far as theming. That's just a tip and trick from my own experiences. Um, migrating a couple of different projects into the cloud. Like I said, that's not always possible because sometimes you've got these scenarios up here, but if you can, this is going to remove a lot of headaches. Um, even if you're doing, because even if the user is switching context from like modern, you know, they're doing that return to classic view, it does a really good job of converting the modern into classic itself in the cloud when you're using that root modern site collection. So a communication or a Teams template. Um, that would be my recommendation. Um, I've also had a couple of projects where we had to do customization, master page customization, so headers and footers essentially, and we had to do that in a hybrid environment where the user was going to see classic and going to see modern. Um, there's a really great article by Bob German, and he took a project that Julie Turner originally created, and if you're in that situation, I would highly recommend looking into into that. It's uh, essentially what she did was it's all the same pool of assets. So like the HTML and the CSS files, it's all the same stuff. And they just fork the tool sets so that it's applying those assets um, using the appropriate tool sets on the classic page and those so same assets using the appropriate tool sets on a modern page. Um, so I, full, full disclosure, I haven't actually used that solution because the project that I worked on, we wound up just creating two side-by-side -side standalone solutions, but I discovered this afterwards and thought it was really cool and thought if I was ever in that situation again, I would um, use that technique. So, and just, this is a link to some really useful resources to help me out, um, some blogs, the uh, everything we've looked at is here, the, the wiki theming, um, the theme generator, and even some some other stuff I didn't mention. So just good point of reference. And that's all I have. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, Tracy. Mm -hmm.